Okay, thank you very much. It's wonderful to be here again. Always like uh, uh, talking about psychology. Let me ask a, a couple questions out there before we get going, folks. How many people out there think psychology is important in trading? I can remember when I started trading, people would talk about psychology. And I have to be honest with you, I always thought that that was kind of interesting because I never thought of psychology uh, being involved in trading. But it's pretty interesting, isn't it? So how many folks out there think psychology is important part of being a successful trader? Quite a few of you, excellent. Well, yeah, of course, right? So today, you're gonna actually like this webinar today because we're actually gonna talk about psychology and how it can impact your trading. But also, we're gonna talk about what you can do, all right, to overcome some problems or issues that may be, you may be having in talking about psychology or trading uh, the markets. So today's topic is gonna be make your psychology work for you, not against you. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we have to talk about is the, of course, the risk involved in trading. But you know, without that risk, there's never any opportunity. So yeah, the two really go hand in hand. You have to accept the risk. You want to limit the risk as much as possible through risk control, but there is risk involved in trading. All right, uh, Renee already introduced me and I thank you for that, Renee. Um, we'd like to invite you to our website at traderscoach.com. We've got a lot of free information there that you can check out. We have trading tools. We've been in business over 20 years now. I've been trading the markets for about 27 years now. Um, and uh, it's been quite a great journey. But I'll tell you, psychology has played a big part in my trading career. I've also written four books right now, um, Trader's Money Management System, The Art of Trading, Survival Guide for Traders, and Elliott Wave Trading Techniques Simplified. So you can check out all those at Amazon or Barnes & Noble, wherever you shop for books. All right, let's talk a little bit about psychology here. Okay, first thing I wanted to, to uh, give you everybody out there is a link to a free report on psychology. It's actually basically talks about developing the trader's mindset and how that is very important in order for you to take advantage of fear and greed in the markets and not be a victim of fear and greed. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to download this. I'm going to put this up in the chat area and I just put the link up there so you can click on that during the presentation and grab that, it's free, but it won't be up there forever. So make sure you do uh, get to it pretty quickly so you can download that before it expires. All right, um, psychology is important because it really affects everything we do, not only in trading, but of course, stress, worry, fear, greed, which all can impact your trading and take you out of the present moment. Whenever we worry about a future event or a past event, we're really not in the present moment. You're either in the future or the past. And so if you're worried about losing all your money trading, it takes you out of being objective and will influence your trading in the present moment. Same thing with going into a trade and already spending the money from the trade because you think you're gonna make a fortune. Again, takes you out of the present process of trading the market. So that's really important. So a trader's improperly managed psychology, okay? This is another interesting point, can actually manifest losing trades even with a proven trading system. You have to be able to control yourself. You can't let your emotions get in the way of your mind from Warren Buffett himself. So what does this exactly mean? Well, many people can trade the same trading approach or same set of rules. Some will be successful and some won't. And it's usually because either one followed the system and one didn't. So the question is, why didn't you follow the system? Why those losing traders did not follow the system? And the reason simply is because something got in the way of following the rules and chances are it's emotions, okay? So you have to um, really discover your triggers and what makes you not follow your trading rules. So my next question is, do you personally out there find emotions interfering with your trading when you're trading the markets? How many of you experience that out there? A ton, right? Of course. 
of course. Everybody's going to experience that at some point. You, you can't be human and not have emotions totally in the market. So the, the next thing is you need to control those emotions. That's really important. And we're going to talk about that during the presentation today. All right, next question. Have you had trouble pulling the trigger to enter a trade? Has fear kept you from actually entering a trade even though your analysis says take the trade? How many have experienced that? And I'm sure many, many of you as well. Of course, right? Absolutely, okay. Next question. I'm a big question person. Have you gotten out of trades too soon because of fear? How many people have gotten out of a trade way too early and didn't follow their trading rules? And they did this because they were afraid the market may reverse and take their profits away. And they just can't stand that. Of course, a lot of people, right? There's a saying that you don't want to be trading, okay, your, your last trade. So what does that mean exactly? Most people that usually get out or have fear of trading, what they usually tend to do is they tend to tr always be trading their last trade. So let's say you were in a long trade and you had your stop set at a certain level and you got out. The market took you out, your stop was hit, and you got out. And then the market recovered and went higher. And then you're sitting there real mad because you got out of the market, even though you follow your rules. Well, the next day, you take another trade. All right, so the trade, long trade again, we'll say, and it came, went up and comes back. And your stop is hit, but you don't take it this time because you remember yesterday you got out and the market recovered and went higher so you didn't want to get out this time. So you stayed in the trade. But this time, the market doesn't recover, heads down, and you take a huge loss. Then you feel frustrated, and you feel like you can't win. And if you follow your rules, and your rules need to be built on probabilities, if you follow your rules, and the probabilities say that if you get out when you're supposed to get out, and you set your stop according to the rules, then Yes, you're not always going to win, but more times than often you are, and that's the correct strategy to follow. So I think it's really important for you to assess your trading and see if that is happening to you in some form or fashion. All right, sometimes you get into trades because of greed, right? How many, how many have had that experience? I think we all have. You don't want to miss out. Of course, usually what happens here, all right, again, you're getting in on the emotion of greed, not your trading rules. And usually what happens is you get in at the wrong time. You get in either at the top of a trend, all right, or you short the market close to a bottom, and it's just the wrong time to get in. You want to get in at the beginning of a trend, not at the end, all right? But greed, greed causes us to deviate from our rules just like fear does. All right, now let's talk about some after effects of trading a little bit. Do you feel stressed out after trading? Okay, especially if you're a day trader. Are you feeling really stressed out? If you have a good set of rules, folks, all right, trading can be pretty stressless, all right? So if you're stressed out, chances are the reason you're stressed out is because of the conflict you feel inside between following your rules and the emotions generated by the market. So you need to work on that. And my question to you guys and gals out there is, what is the most destructive emotion you personally feel while trading? You don't have to type it in. But think about that. What is the most destructive emotion you feel while trading? I do a lot of coaching literally around the world. And uh, this is a great question because it really helps me get into the heads of, of whoever I'm coaching with. And a lot of times what happens, they feel, uh, especially day traders get this emotion. They feel like they're gambling. Okay, they feel like things are going too fast and, and they're gambling. And that can be a very destructive mo motion. So you have to eliminate that feeling like you're gambling. And of course, risk control is, a, is really the door that separates gambling okay, from good trading. All right, now, another question for you all is which is more powerful, fear or greed? Does greed, does greed have an element of fear in it? Think about all that, okay? Let's take an example here on this slide. You fear you will miss the move, okay? Is that greed to get in or fear that you will miss out? 
kind of uh, an interesting question, isn't it? Both are intertwined, but are they equal in intensity? Are they equal in intensity? Who thinks fear out there is more powerful than greed? Okay, that'll tell you a little bit about your psychology. If you feel fear is more powerful than greed, then chances are you're probably either going to have a hard time pulling the trigger or you may be getting out of trends, good trades, really too early. Okay, so I think that's important. All right, so be able to spot these emotions in the market, you know, of fear and greed, and we want you to exploit them, not be a victim of them. That's really important. Okay, all right, so let's move on here. And of course, you know, whenever we see a major fractal point in the market, which is a change in the market, you know, a, piv a pivot point, that's a change uh, in emotions in the market from uh, various traders moving in and out of the market. So we can actually capitalize on those particular setups. We can identify setups in the market that actually tell us when fear and greed is there. All right. I also want to talk to you a little bit about where you are now. I think you need, as a trader, to assess where you are more from a psychological standpoint, what we're talking about here, than anything else. So let's just take a look at some of these things. All right, I want you to answer these questions. All right, don't type them in, just answer them yourself. Do you feel anxiety and stress when you trade? Are you working harder but still losing in the markets? Do you feel wound up at the end of a trading day? Does the market feel like a hostile place for you? Are you failing to execute your trading signals? Are you constantly searching for a trading system? And ultimately, are you constantly losing? So any yeses to those particular questions will signal an area that you have to take note of and work on. Your goal is really what we call developing the trader's mindset. And obviously that means successfully trade. But you know, you can work less and actually make more and be okay with that. You don't have to feel guilty about that. You know, this is not a nine to five job. Trading is not nine to five, okay? You wanna work smart. If you have an edge in the markets, then you wanna exploit that edge and make as much money as you can. So that's how you can work less and make more, is just increase your trading account, all right, and trade more markets using the same set of rules that are working for you, and it's really not gonna be much more work at all. All right, you'll actually find that you're working less and making more, all right? You need to also approach the, com uh, the markets calmly and stress-free from what I call an objective standpoint. And remember when I started this webinar a few minutes ago, I talked about if your mind is focused in the future or in the past, it's going to take you out of being objective in the present. So you really need to focus on that um, issue if you're having it. Okay, avoid destructive emotional trading. Okay, and these are triggers I'm talking about. What triggers you? What is fear and greed is, is to you? is listening to um, you know, the Money Honey or any of the shows that are on TV about you know, the markets, do they cause you to deviate from following your trading rules because they make things sound so exciting? Well, if that's the case, turn the TV off, okay? Stay with your rules. Learn your triggers on what causes you to really inappropriately trade the market based on emotions. All right, and you want to learn to trade calmly and confidently. It's, it's usually, you know, baby steps to get there, but things like, you know, getting rid of things that cause you emotional distress. All right, and then finally enjoy life, okay, obviously. All right, you will not develop the trader's mindset and be a successful trader unless you master your mind and understand where you are now. What triggers fear? What triggers greed? All right, in you personally, and what triggers anger? Do you feel anger at the markets? Okay, sometimes those triggers too uh, are are cause you to go crazy, right? All right, so you gotta you gotta think about what is bothering you in the markets and bothering you personally from a psychological standpoint. All right, I'm gonna um, change gears here a little bit and talk about some significant factors affecting psychology 
and go into this a little bit. And I'm going to focus on just three of them right now. Uh, the first one is uh, one I call visual perception. And we're going to talk about are we looking, you know, what we're looking at is an illusion or reality. Um, we're going to talk about emotional perception, your mood, uh, how that affects you, and your environmental perception, your past and present. So let's go take a look first at visual perception. First thing I want to talk to you about is that our minds are capable, really, of a lot more than we realize. Visual examples, which I'm going to show you shortly, okay, illustrate how our minds can conceive and create illusions we may not even be aware of. All right, so let's take a look at this for a moment. All right, look at these squares here. Now, from an illusion standpoint, I think everybody sees the lines as not being straight, okay, all over the place, kind of crazy, right? But actually, they're all straight. It's the different colors that make up the lines and the boxes that cause the illusion of the lines bending, okay? So I think that's kind of important, all right? Next one, look at the nose. Focus on the nose on this picture of this person and focus for 15 seconds. And then after 15 seconds, look at the white part of the screen and tell me what you see. A pretty woman, right? Okay, there you go. All right, again, we're looking at a negative, but notice how your mind can transpose that without even you being aware of it, okay, when you look on the white side. So the mind's pretty amazing. That's the point here. Let's look at another one. All right, count the black dots. Every time you see a black dot, they turn white, don't they? All right, so the purpose of those slides was to give you some visual examples how our minds can conceive and create certain illusions we may not even be aware of. Illusions can be visual and or could be created subconsciously by emotions created by elite beliefs, which is what we're going to talk about next in a minute. All right, so you need to learn how to control these powerful illusions created from within. Since visual examples illustrate how our minds can conceive and create illusions, this leads to us to ask, are you seeing the markets as it really is? Let's take a look at an example here. Look at this chart. This We'll call this chart A, all right? So this is pretty flat, you know. I, what kind of feelings do you have right now looking at this market? It's kind of boring, right? It goes back and forth, back and forth. Let's look at this chart, chart B. All right, I'm sure you feel more emotion generated on this chart than you do on the other one. But guess what? They're the exact same chart. The only difference is I change the X and Y axis, all right, to kind of you know, bring up the, the points, the pivot points higher to create this type of difference. So I think it's really important to note here that when you look at a chart, some person may have their X and Y axis expanded, like on the right side, some may not, and that may cause them to be a different kind of trader than the person on the left. All right, so take note when you have your computer set up with your charting platform, what you're really looking at, okay? Adjust it and see if that doesn't uh, affect at points you know, what you're looking at in the markets. And I think it's pretty important to also realize that when you have your chart set up, one other point here is studies have shown if your charts are lower than your eye level, you don't do as well as when they're at eye level or above. Okay, so don't have your charts lower. That's some study I read on trading where they did a big, uh, Big study on it, and that was what they found out. All right, so now, number two, let's move on to emotional perception. All right, so we talked about visual perception, now we're going to emotional perception. All right, I want everybody out there to write down, without thinking, use the uh, questions area, write down without thinking, what animal does the market signify to you? 
Okay, what animal does the market signify to you? Don't think, just write. First animal that comes into your mind. I'll wait a, I'll wait a couple seconds here. What animal does the market represent to you? Kind of fun, this stuff, huh? All right. Okay, so, you know, I'm seeing all sorts of different responses here. Okay, uh, some are saying a lion, some are saying snakes, all right, uh, dogs, all sorts of things. All right, but what's important when we look at this, okay, is that your answer to this question will tell you much about your beliefs about the market. This question is what I usually ask on day one when I coach a new student. I don't care where they live. They can live in Australia, United Kingdom, United States, South America, wherever. This is the first question I always ask them because it's very revealing, okay? So if the market is threatening to you or tricky, you will most likely choose an animal that could hurt you or deceive you. Now, you know, some people may love lions. So if you choose a lion because you love a lion, that doesn't mean that the lion is threatening to you. It means that you like lions, so the market is okay, all right? So it, it, it's a relative, the animal has to be relative to how you perceive that animal, okay? So in this, I just say the animal could hurt you, like a lion, tiger, or snake. Most people that choose a lion, tiger, or snake, all right, don't trust the markets. They feel threatened. But some people may love lions, tigers, or snakes. I don't know. All right, if the market is threatening in a hostile place, you will trade from a fearful mindset. So right away, all right, when I ask that question, and then I ask them what animal they chose, and what's the relationship they have to that animal? I know they're either trading from a fearful mindset or they're not, okay? One or the other, and that's really important, okay? All right, so that's one thing. The usual outcome, okay, of trading from a fearful mindset is producing emotional trading that usually means, again, traders will exit the market too quickly or cannot pull the trigger at the right time. The bottom line is they lose money based on fear, okay? However, okay, if they choose an animal that is kind of safe to them or they feel good about, all right, then the market is a fun and safe place for them, okay? Then most likely, okay, if that animal is non-threatening, all right, then you'll be okay and more objective in the market. However, all right, you also have the other side of the coin, all right, if you take this side to the extreme, this could also lead to thinking about the market as no risk at all, okay, and it may lead to a lackadaisical, unstructured trading approach leading to poor risk control and eventual loss as well. So you kind of want to be in the middle area, all right, you kind of want to have an animal you like, okay, but at the same time, respect, okay, at the same time. So that's kind of how the uh, eventually you want to get to in your trader's mindset. Very important. All right, fear is usually the reason most people never leave what they call their comfort zone, all right? So in this diagram, you have the comfort zone listed, all right? However, if you never leave there, you never get to the area where the magic happens. All right, so sometimes you're forced to leave your comfort zone. This can create emotional issues as well, okay? It can create fear, okay? And sometimes excitement, the, hand, the two go hand in hand. So what you have to do is when you leave your comfort zone, you have to realize before you leave it that you may encounter new territory that may create fear. What you want to do is separate that fear into compartments of whether it's imagined or real, all right? Because sometimes if you leave your comfort zone, all right, you're so afraid, all right, that you can actually keep the magic from happening sometimes. So you have to be kind of uh, ready and in a very stable mindset before you actually are ready to leave your comfort zone. 
But you comfort leaving your comfort zone, it's a good thing to do, okay, when you're ready. All right, now I love this, fear, okay, fear. F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real, okay? So there's an emotional fear, okay? Sometimes fear is good, okay? Sometimes we obviously, you know, if you're getting, you know, attacked by a bull or something, then you run like heck, right? Okay, that's real fear, all right? But what I'm talking about is um, emotional fear as being false evidence appearing real. Our minds can literally think of situations or fantasize about situations, and they become in terms of internally as if they feel real, okay? So in other words, sometimes we create our own fear is what I'm saying. All right, so fear is relative as well, all right? What bothers you may not bother me and vice versa, all right? But I think a, an important first step in tackling your fear, and this is a key point, is separating real fear from fear you're creating or imagining, okay? Or getting out of control because of your imagination, all right? So you need to learn to distinguish between real and false fear, okay? All right, and also too, underneath there it says feel, fear equals illusion of what we feel is threatening. Again, this shows you that fear is absolutely relative, okay? If you take a sky jumper that jumps out of an airplane every day, jumping out of an airplane is gonna be no big deal. But if you got up there and you never did that before, it's gonna be a big deal. You're gonna be scared to death, all right? So it's all relative, all relative. All right, but you can stop your fear, okay? And I think this is the first step you need to conquer in order to become a great trader. And in terms of trading, the only way I know for you to really get a handle on fear is add some structure to your trading so you don't feel like a ping pong ball being batted around by what you hear on the news, what somebody says and your emotions and all that. Follow your rules, and that's going to help add structure to your trading and eliminate the fear. And those rules must include risk control as well. So if you stop and think about it, okay, also too, if you don't have a set of trading rules or you're not quite ready for that yet, then stop trading and do simulated trading until you're profitable in a simulated environment. Okay, paper trading. All right, everybody says, oh, that poo-poo paper trading. Right, that really stinks. That's not the same as real emotions. Okay, I get that. I don't disagree with that. But I can tell you one thing. If you aren't successful paper trading in a, in a stressless environment with no money, then when you go into the markets with real money, guess what? You're not going to do very good. And I'd much rather go into the markets after paper trading successfully, having an edge, and then if I still have problems in the market, then I know it's one of two things. Either I'm experiencing a market I never tested or paper traded before, or my emotions are screwing me up. And if it's my emotions, then I stop trading and go fix those. That's far better than just jumping into the markets without a tested system, blowing yourself up, feeling terrible, and not knowing what the problem is. Is it trading rules or is it emotions, right? So I give actually a lot of precedence to, to paper trading and testing your rules before going in with real money. And if you think about it, look at the list of these things I've listed here. Samurai warrior, combat fighter pilots, race car drivers, and yes, traders. They all practice continuously all the time. All right, I have a fourth degree black belt, okay, in Taekwondo, all right? It took me years to get that, all right? But I had to practice about five or six times a week to get that for about eight years, okay? And so that's what a samurai warrior does, practices all the time, all the time. That's how you get really good. Combat fighter pilots practice all the time and they do it in simulation too. And think of all the airline pilots that go through flight simulators, okay, on a regular basis so they know what to do when a problem happens in a real flight, race car drivers too, why would traders be any different? If you think this is not correct, it's because you're too impatient to take the time to do it. And that's greed, folks. 
okay? So if you don't have the time, okay, to devote to testing your system, then you're operating from an emotional standpoint already, and you're doomed to failure. It's just a matter of time. And this, what ha this is what happens to 90, I'd say 95% of the new traders. So think about that, all right? Let's talk a little bit about beliefs and thoughts. I got just a few, uh, well, I got about 10 minutes, I guess. Um, let's talk about beliefs and thoughts. What is the difference in relationship between your beliefs, your thoughts, your attitudes, and behaviors? You know, when we talk about thoughts and ideas, okay, thoughts, subconscious and conscious, going through your mind, all right, we think, you know, how many thoughts do we have a day? Okay, thousands, right? Maybe even, I don't know, a million, I don't know. But anyway, thoughts come into our mind all the time, right? But only thoughts that really make a difference are the ones we focus on or the ones that we energize. Energize. So think about that, okay? The things you energize or think about repeatedly are gonna be the ones, okay, that actually are gonna create your reality, all right? So beliefs, a belief is an energized thought that you make real or accept as true. Unfortunately, some beliefs may not be based on the current reality, all right? For example, you could have had a situation where you grew up and you grew up in a family structure where if you didn't have a nine to five job, okay, you didn't really have a job, all right? So entrepreneurs were not looked on favorably in a family structure like that, okay? So here you come and you wanna be an entrepreneur or a trader, which is the same thing, all right? And yet in the back of your mind, because of your upbringing, your thoughts were energized at a young age by your family structure, created a belief that, you know, I'm a trader, but it really doesn't count because I'm not going to work nine to five. You gotta get over that thought if you're having it or you'll never be successful. So you have to do some kind of inside search here, all right? Hopefully as you get older, you realize that's not true, but you know, we all have our little demons inside uh, that we have to cope with, all right? So belief is an energized thought that you either make real or accept as true. Unfortunately, like I said, some beliefs may not be based on current reality. Attitudes, okay, beliefs can create your attitudes and can influence our actions and reactions. And finally, our behavior is the result of our beliefs, thoughts, and attitudes set into action, all right? Emotions that are attached to our thoughts, this ultimately creates our behavior. So let me talk a little bit more, okay, about some things here, all right? So how can this affect your trading? As a trader, how much emotions do you attach to losing or winning? I bet you, most of you, all right, get more attachment to losing than winning because when you trade, you expect to win, but when you lo lose, it upsets your apple cart and pisses you off. So therefore, you're, you're going to be focusing your energy more on the losing trades, aren't you? Now, that doesn't mean you can't learn from your losing trades, but you don't want to dwell on them. And if you dwell on them so long, guess what happens? You get angry at the markets and at yourself, all right? And then you try to get even, and now you're emotionally trading again, right? So what I want you to do instead is try to be objective, middle of the road, and put as much emphasis on winning, okay, energize those thoughts, okay, um, maybe more than losing, okay, or at least at the very least as much. So don't make losing more energized than winning, okay? All right, and then finally, your core beliefs here, okay, you perceive yourself as a winner or a loser. These are deep inside, all right? What's your feeling about money? Okay, is it good or bad? What's it, what's it about trading? Is it possible to be a good trader? Okay, hopefully, all right, or else you should choose another career, all right? About success, do you deserve it? Because I can tell you, if you answer no to any of those core beliefs, all right, it's gonna be tough for you to be successful. All right, so fix those. Those are things you gotta be fixed. 
All right, environment. Let's talk quickly about environment. And we'll wrap it up here, okay? So your environment will impact your belief system. No question about it, okay? Think about your past and how that influences your beliefs today. I gave you the example of growing up in the family structure that believed uh, being an entrepreneur was not a good thing, blah, blah, blah. Okay, think about your present, okay, and how that influences your beliefs. You know, does your spouse think trading's good or bad? You don't think that's going to influence you based on what they think? All right, I can tell you if you have a, a losing streak and your spouse thinks trading's uh, um, gambling, that's going to just, uh, they're just going to go all over that, okay? All right, but we all have a unique maze, okay? We all have things that affect our beliefs. Again, look internally and try to figure out what they are for you personally. You need to do that. And this, of course, is the classic thing uh, on the glass half full or empty. So when we take all this into account, all right, how do you see the glass? Is it half full or half empty? Is this a, an issue based on a visual illusion or a belief illusion, optimism or pessimism? It's a little, it's a little of how you perceive everything. Okay, so the glass half full, okay, the, the famous cliche there, is actually a pretty interesting thought to talk about in terms of psychology because it really kicks in the visual, the belief, you know, the emotional side, and where you're at now. All right, so our minds, as we wrap this up, our minds are more capable than we realize, okay? Thus, your mind is creating illusions you may not even be aware of. Illusions may be visual, as we discussed, or may be created subconsciously by emotions created by our beliefs, which we discussed. Are, you, are your emotions such as fear distorting what is real and how you interpret and act in the markets? How your mind sees and interprets the markets may be affecting your trading without you even being aware of it. All right, so let me wrap this up by saying, do you think it's important to learn skills to control your emotions and identify distorted illusions before they sabotage your trading? You bet, right? In fact, I've devoted a whole home study course on psychology, and it has a lot of exercises in it that's going to lead you down the path to fix this for you, okay? So keep that in mind, and it's on our website if you're interested. All right, let me just... Uh, a few famous quotes here, okay? Winners are not people who never fail, but people who never quit. Successful people usually fail a lot more than unsuccessful people do. That's just the way it is. So don't feel bad about failing. Failing's a part of life, okay? I probably have failed so many more times um, than I want to really admit, okay? But guess what? Failing and leaving your comfort leaving your comfort zone, okay, means you're going to fail some, and that's okay. All right, just never give up. Okay, if you really want to succeed, never ever give up. All right. So the next step here for you, okay, is I would suggest downloading this free report. I put it up in the chat area for you. So just click on that link. I do it now because the webinar is over, you're not gonna miss anything else, all right? And it's a reprint from chapter 11 in the Art of Trading that I wrote, okay? And it's really, really good on psychology and self-awareness. And I also list 15 destructive psychological trading issues and their causes. So see if any of that um, is affecting your trading, all right? So I want to thank everybody for attending today. And Renee, I want to thank you again for having me and putting this all together. Uh, I don't know if you guys, real, guys and gals out there really realize, but it's a big job putting a webinar like this on with multiple speakers. So I thank you for that. And I wish everybody the very, very best.